With the new month on the horizon, I want to once again take a look at the games coming out in September and decide on what games that I would recommend you to buy right away and other games that maybe you're better off waiting on a sale for or skipping altogether. Now, September is an interesting month because I am dubbing September the month of the remasters, the month of the remakes, whatever you want to call it, because we are getting four major ones and all four of them, because of their price points, because of the games that they are, I would say are all buys. And then the games I would say to wait on a sale for, new big budget titles. However, the price does make me a little bit hesitant, especially if you're the more budget constrained consumer. I think all of those games are going to be discounted heavily by, let's say, Black Friday, so I think you're going to be better off waiting. However, let's start off with the games that I would say are buys. First of all, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2. This is one that I am incredibly excited about. We need some more skateboarding games on the market. I know EA is bringing back uh, Skate, and I know there's a couple of other ones coming out. However, there's a lot of nostalgia with Tony Hawk's uh, Pro Skater 1 and 2. And the thing is, this is an Activision collection. When you talk about Activision collections, they retain their price for a very long time. Look at Crash Bandicoot the Insane Trilogy. Look at Spiral Reignited Trilogy. This is getting inspiration be from those games because these are very nostalgic titles that they're remaking in a big way and it's more than your typical remaster. I mean, you look at the visuals from uh, the original games to this. This is a big, big visual facelift and it's not just like an HD remaster that a lot of other games get and this is one that I'm super excited for just on the basis that we need more of these arcade skateboarding games and priced at $30 $9.99 for the base edition. That you can get the digital deluxe for $49.99, but $40 for both games. That's a really, really solid deal. And you get a decent amount of game uh, game modes, all the original game modes, and then you get additional content as well. Uh, play all the original modes and go head to head with local two players. Show off your style and creativity with upgraded, create a park and create a skater features. Compete against players from all around the world in multiplayer modes and leaderboards. So a lot of longevity to this one as well. And I'm gonna say it's a buy. All right, next up, another big remaster, Kingdoms of. Amalur Ray Reckoning. This is one that I am incredibly excited about. I've been going to bat for THQ Nordic to bring back KOA for a while. Ever since they acquired the rights to the game, I was like, man, we're probably not going to get a sequel unless a remaster performs uh, well. And now we have the remaster, Kingdoms of Amalur Ray Reckoning. Not a big fan of the name, but who cares about that? The game is awesome. Ray Reckoning is incredible. I should say Kingdoms of Amalur is incredible in the sense that it's an open world RPG. However, I know that some of you guys are sometimes a little bit off put by RPG. RPGs just based on their slower nature of gameplay. Kingdoms of Amalur is absolutely not like that. Think of an open world RPG and think about stylizing it in the sense of a fast-paced Devil May Cry game or a God of War game reminiscent to God of War 1 to 3. That's what you get out of Kingdoms of Amalur. And on top of that, you get some very, very robust content in a content-filled world. It's not the biggest open world ever, especially because open worlds have just gotten bigger and bigger this generation and this came out back in like 2012. So it's a little bit dated on that end, but visuals still hold up decently enough and the gameplay is still to die for. So happy that this game is coming back and I know a lot of you guys missed out on it, so now would be a great time to check it out. At $40, it's pretty good. Because it's a THQ Nordic published title, I do imagine it's going to go on sale uh, not too long after its release, but this is one that I would say the $40 is uh, worthwhile even on release day, and they are actually going to do some more content for Kingdoms of Amalur, so that is super exciting for someone like me that has missed this game for a long time. Very excited for this one. This is out September 8th. Next up, Mafia Definitive Edition is out September 25th. Look, you're getting the first Mafia game. Yes, it's dubbed a Definitive Edition, and usually that makes you think, oh, this is just a visual facelift. It's a remaster. No, this is a ground-up remake of Mafia. I feel like we should really get the naming uh, nomenclature right for these remasters, remakes, whatever you want to call it, but everybody's going to call them different things, so I guess at this point, uh, you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube, so to speak, and everybody's just naming them different things, so we kind of just have to go with what you know about it. Part 1 of the Mafia Crime Saga 1930s Lost Heaven Illinois remade from the ground up with a new game engine, an updated script, and new cutscenes, additional gameplay sequences, and more. I mean, what more do you need? This is a remake. This is not just your typical remaster. It's a remade classic. You play a mob movie, and you're going to get some great gameplay in it as well. This isn't necessarily a full-blown open world title, but it's definitely going to have some open environments to it, but not necessarily at the scope of a Grand Theft Auto game or anything like that. But I really dig Mafia because it's got more of an emphasis on that crime aspect. The narrative has always been super strong. Mafia 2 in particular had a great narrative, and from what I remember of Mafia 1, it was rather strong as well. Mafia 3, not so much. Unfortunately, the Mafia 2 remaster on the PlayStation 4 left a little bit to be desired. It was still pretty decent because Mafia 2 fundamentally is such a good game, but this one being a full 
on remake of Mafia 1, it's going to be something that a lot of people are going to want to check out. And again, priced at $40, or you can get Mafia 1, 2, and 3 for $60 at the definitive editions of all of those, and that's not a bad buy either. Uh, so that's something to think about, but just the base game for $40, I think that's pretty good. And lastly, another remaster to round things out. We've got Crisis Remaster dropping September 18th. Now, this is being developed and published by uh, Crytek. It's not like Crisis 1, where it was developed by Crytek and I believe published by EA. I might be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure I'm on the money with that. Maybe it was uh, Crisis 2 and 3 that was published by EA. You guys get the idea. This is a self-published game by Crytek, and it's priced at $29.99. Look, I was already incredibly excited for this because I loved Crisis 1. I played it on the PlayStation 3, and uh, yeah, the PlayStation 3 version was not the best, and I played it on PC, much better version over there, but with Crisis Remaster, you are getting a significant facelift. Go check out that trailer of the Crisis Remaster, and my god, side by side, to see the improvements they are making with Crisis Remaster, it is pretty incredible, and again, it's gonna be $30. That's what I like about all of these collections and these remasters that I've labeled off in this video. They're all priced accordingly. Look, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2, the appetite for skateboarding games is pretty heavy. They probably could have gotten away with a $50 price point. $40 is what we're getting that for. Kingdoms of Amalur, Ray Reckoning, that's a big open world title, they could have gotten away with $50. I'm happy that it's only $40. Mafia Definitive Edition is a legit remake, it's not a remaster, it's a remake from the ground up, they could have gone with a $49.99, $59.99 price point, and Crisis Remastered, hell, they could have gone with $39.99 at the very least, but all of them have been priced very accordingly, that's why I'm comfortable in saying that all of these are going to be worthwhile on launch day, and I give it up to the developers and publishers for pricing these games accordingly. As far as Crisis goes, it's a great game, not only for its technical nuances and its technical brevity and achievement because yes it is amazing from a graphical standpoint but it's a well-made first person shooter on top of that so I think a lot of you guys are gonna end up really enjoying it so those four games I would say buy on day one now let's talk about some games that I think you're better off waiting on a sale for Hopping things off on number one, Marvel's Avengers, absolutely. Look, it's a Square Enix Western release. What does that mean? It's probably going to get cheap very quickly, and there's a chance that it's going to be a little bit of a rough game. And again, even if Marvel's Avengers is excellent, you have to think about the fact that it is a Square Enix Western game. Look at games like um, the Tomb Raider titles. You can go back to games like Left Alive. I know that was a Japanese title, but Left Alive, these new games that do come out from Square Enix, they tend to go on sale very, very quickly. The only things that really hold up in price are big budget Final Fantasy games ff7 remake is only now going down to 40 dollars marvel's avengers by black friday i could easily see this being 30 dollars so i would definitely say hold off on it and if you've been playing the beta i've had a more positive reception than most other people um but a lot of people are not that enthralled by it so i definitely see this one going on sale i would say even wait until the spider-man extension comes out on playstation 4 or playstation 5 and then pick it up then because i do think by that point the game is going to see some improvements and it's going to get some new content and it might be even more worthwhile then. Next up, Iron Harvest is on September 1st. This is a game that I think looks really good. $49.99 is a little bit steep on this one. It's being published by Deep Silver. It's a classic real-time strategy game with an epic single-player campaign, multiplayer, and co-op set in alternate reality of 1920. You know, it's an RTS on PlayStation 4, unless you're super into strategy games. Yes, I like the setting a lot. I think that's got a lot of potential, but uh, I want to see an RTS be realized in a quality fashion on PlayStation 4, and you always have to be a little bit hesitant from a console standpoint, so I would say wait on a sale for that one. Doraemon Story of Seasons, $50 is just a little bit pricey. That's what it's priced at on PC. This is definitely one I would keep an eye on. It's being published by Bandai Namco. Bandai Namco games sometimes don't hold up their price all too much for the long term. So hopefully by Black Friday, this is, you know, down to $30 as well because it could be a good buy at that point. And lastly, one that I am really excited for, 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim. This game looks awesome to me. It's being done by Vanillaware. However, it's a $59.99 Vanillaware title, which is always going to be a little bit of a hard sell. Vanillaware has its audience, but this one is also a little bit different. It's a Vanillaware stylized game from a visual standpoint. However, you're talking about different elements from a gameplay standpoint with these tactics-based gameplay. At a $60 price point, I find it to be a little bit of a hard sell. Maybe when it's down to $40 or $30, it'll be an easy buy. But at $60, I just feel like it's a little bit pricey. I'll probably check it out day one, but I have the luxury of being able to check out these games day one. From thinking about it from a budget-minded consumer standpoint, I would probably say wait out on this one. Um, 
you know, and that's coming from somebody that's a big, big vanilla wear fan. I think if this goes on sale for, you know, $40, $30, would be really good. Look at how cheap Dragon's Crown is now. You can get Dragon's Crown Pro for like 10 bucks, 13 Sentinels, Aegis Room. I think ultimately, you know, a year, two years down the line, it'll have the same fate. And we still have to really see how this game is realized. I've seen some of the early reviews and they're looking positive, but $59.99 is always going to be a little bit of a hard sell. Um, especially for a game like this. Not to take anything away from Vanillaware titles, Muramasa Demon's Blade was awesome, Odin Sphere was awesome, Dragon's Crown was awesome, but I don't remember if Dragon's Crown released at $60. Um, it may have, but even then, you guys know how I am. I'm very, very selective on which games I would say are worth $60. A Ghost of Tsushima, that's worth $60. 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim, as good as I personally think it looks, I do think it's better off that you wait for a sale on this one, just my two cents. But that's gonna conclude this video. Definitely interested to hear what you guys think. Wanted know what you guys are picking up in the month of September a lot of exciting options and it's really just a breather until we get into October and November next gen consoles even bigger game releases so sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below thank you for watching and goodbye Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.